Max, do you really think about lineouts in your sleep? And I hope you still do. Yeah, actually, I do, Marty. I know that sounds pretty boring to you, but... Uh, no, I don't. I find it yeah, fantastic, no, mate. Actually, I was having a chat with some learned character yesterday, and, um, you know, at one stage, it was a sort of a, a battle of attrition in the line-out, whether you could win the ball, because there was a lot of obstruction and pushing and shoving, and, you know, you had to survive first before you got one hand to it, let alone two. Um, but now it's it's sort of morphed into a sort of an art form, really. It's I, choreography I these days, Mex, is what it is. I don't know if there's a contestability in the lineouts like there used to be. You remember that guy Skylab? Did you play against him? Skylab, that was John Eels, was it? No, the uh, Aussie guy. The other guy, Steve, someone he was. Oh, Steve Cutler. Yes. yes. I did play against him. Good on you. Good memory. Yeah, good memory. Yeah, but anyway, um, it is a bit of an art form, actually. Choreography might be going a bit too far, but um, it is an art form, and it's a, it's far more appealing to watch a line-out today than it did in my day, uh, because, you know, you can see um, how the sort of the decoy runners, uh, the movement around, the, the number in the line-out, uh, the quick thinking, the calling, where the ball is actually thrown, the skill set of the players, you know, where that ball is. For example, in the match, in the last match, um, I think the very first line-out we threw him to, in was to Papa Lee. Now, he's not renowned as a line-out forward. And here it is, big test against Wales at Cardiff Arms or Cardiff, Cardiff Millennium Stadium, should I say. It's not even Millennium Stadium. What is it? Principality Oh, Stadium. see, this is what I hate, Mix. Call it Cardiff Arms. That's what we all know, mate. Yeah, that's fine. But anyway... He, um, you know, he, he took the first ball and he was standing at two in the line-out. So that was pre-planned. Uh, and I think it was great, a great idea because he he now has to become a line-out option if he's going to be a serious contributor because, you know, Artie's going to be in the team by hook or by crook unless he's injured. And you've got to really have a couple of other loose forwards who can win aerial position. So, you know, he did it on that occasion without anybody even competing. So it was by surprise. So... I still think that it is an art form, the line out. All right, so those loose forwards, I mean, now that we're talking about that, let's just rip into that because I want to ask you about the line outs in terms of the Black Ferns. I've got some great stats for you from those Red Roses, the English women, and, and how much they use the line out to dominate. But going back to the loose forwards, and last week we put uh, your comments out on Twitter, got thousands and thousands of listens, I've got to say, uh, when you were saying that you would have swapped the seven and the eight. But after watching that Welsh game, and given the fact that, hey, they did let us play and gave us that room through the middle and so forth, are you still thinking that we need to rejig that seven and eight? I am, I certainly am, and I'll explain it in a minute. But it, it's very hard for me to watch on television and have the same vision that uh, our All Black selectors can have uh, at the game. There's nothing like being at the game to see where loose forwards run. And it appears to me that they're playing a sort of a zonal game. So, in, a, in effect, um, Dalton Papali and, and Adi Sevilla are sharing the role of number eights and number sevens at the moment anyway. You see they'll take a, uh, one will take one side of the field from, from say, a line out and the other will, will, will attack the ball. So, I mean, that's the way, that's the way a lot of teams play too today. My point is that there are a hell of a lot of scrums in the game. Um, depends on the referee, depends on the error rate. But, you know, you can have up to 20 scrums in a game. And that means you get contesting possession 20 times. And if your open side flanker um, is, you know, a specialist at the role uh, and very good at anticipating where that actual contact point's going to be uh, so we can recover, retain or regain, I call it, retain or regain possession, then that's really, really some significant and really important. So... Um, you know, it doesn't matter who has the ball in the scrum. It doesn't matter whether they have it or we have it, but 90% of the time it goes to the open side. So, you know, if you, if you become a specialist rather than a jack-of-all-trades is what I'm saying, and Artie is a specialist in that area, Papa Lee is not a specialist in that area. But anyway, they're sharing the role at the moment, and um, it was a great result, wasn't it? I mean, despite the referee, uh, who was officious um, at best, um, I thought we rose above it really well and I thought we scored some great tries. And you'd have to say the support play and the way we attacked them, like you said, through the middle was outstanding.
Mix, Justin Marshall was on the show during the week and Marshy said that he was at the game and he said that he spent 15 minutes and I loved him saying that because I wanted to mention this too because I know that this is what you do when you're live at a game as well. He spent 15 minutes just watching Papa Lee. He said his eyes just on him, where he went uh, and, and the angles he was running, what what he was doing at the breakdown, uh, who he was supporting, all of these different things. And he said that you know he was absolutely being used in that turnover role. And he's a real physical guy and he was actually making an impact there. My question for you is though, is that their Welsh forward pack didn't really front up. So, and, and look, we don't know who's playing against Scotland, which is a real frustration. I'd like to see the same team out there again. So, so what my question for you is, is, is how convinced are you by what you saw, what you saw on the TV? And, 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 and is that the blueprint to then again play against England in a couple of weeks? Or do we play these guys against Scotland? Well, Marty, as usual, you've said about 20, 20 questions. questions. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure where you want me to start, but I'll start by, first of all, I think that's fantastic um, that... Um, um, you study it. If you want to, if you want to understand what a player's up to, you've got to study him for ten to fifteen minutes. So, what Justin did was great. I mean, if, when you're at the game, you can do that and see the game as well. On television, you can't do that. You know, I'm I'm um, I'm actually pumping here for more live audience because um, I think that <laughs> we've become lazy in this country, particularly during COVID. You know, with no stadiums open, people staying at home watching TV and thinking it's just as easy. Um, you know, when I look around the MPC, the, the stadiums are empty, which I think is tragic because you only see a small part of it, which, which is what the producer wants you to see. Um, you know, and that's and that's really where the ball is. You don't see what the other movement, and so it's very hard for us to speculate. But Justin, I'm, I'm pleased to hear those comments of Justin. No, my my point really is that um, Papali. I agree. The second point you've raised is Papali over the ball is very strong. And some players are stronger than others over the ball. And I think Artie and Dalton are both really strong over the ball. When I say over the ball, it means, you know, tilted at the waist with your legs wide apart, your shoulders over the ball and your hands actually going for the ball, not supporting your body weight, actually going to take the, the turnover. There's only a split second when you get it. And, of course, the sooner you get there, the better. Sometimes you can get there and, and you've got time if you get there quickly. On, on most occasions, you know, you're competing with an op- opponent who's doing trying to do the same. So if you've got a split second to make a decision of whether you can attack that ball, and um, those two players are fantastic at it. Um, I guess my comments on the open side flanker is the role of the open side is, is um, you know, regain and ret- retain and regain the ball at... at at the breakdown, really, that's that's the key area of their of his role, and I don't see Dalton being as good at hunting and gathering as Artie Sevier. Now we're talking about one of the best in the world here, aren't we? And possibly the best in the world at that. And we even saw that the game last week against Wales. So, you know, he couldn't be learning. He couldn't be learning from a better man. Um, so, if they can split the role satisfactorily, then. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay. I still think the shortest route to the ball is from the open side blanket position, not from the number eight. The number eight has to take stock. He's two metres further behind. He has to take stock of what is actually happening. Um, did the breakdown occur like it was supposed to or was the ball at the last moment flicked on, which allows him to cover and move into that place? You with me, Marty? Yeah, look, I am. I'm actually, I'm actually visualising it in front of me. That's what I'm actually, I'm actually visual. Because, but what I was, my, what I was going to ask you, what you think? I was saying, Mix, but hey, this is all split second stuff in your mind, mate. I mean, you can't be stuck on your feet. You got to, don't you have to be on your toes? Or don't you? Is your body moving one way? I mean, these are decisions you're making on the fly, aren't you? Yeah, and some of them are instinctive decisions, Martin, which is why some players are better in one position than another. I mean, I'll, I'll, um, I'll just. I'll just move slightly to the Blackburns here. Go on. Um, so just to sort of make my point so that you clearly understand, because I really do want you to become a specialist as a loose forward critic. <laughs> you know, mate, I'm be... not going to, because I get you on. There's no way I'm even going to start on that, mate. No, no, no. <laughs> but we need a few people to understand what they're commenting about, you see. So, okay. you know, there's a, there's a young lady called Sarah Harini. Sarah Goss used to be called before she was married. And... She, I watch her play because I think she's a very, very good footballer. And she plays as an open-side flanker, which I love. But, you know, 
she could play equally as well as a number eight. Okay. Because she has vision and a feel for that uh, breakdown area, and she's really good at it. Um, now, so I think those two positions um, have a lot of similarity. The one difference is that the open side has to commit, has to commit immediately, and it's instinctive. And Sam Kane's got that instinct, and so has Artie Severe. He's got that instinct. Uh, the number eight role is a little bit different because you have an option. You don't have to commit. If you don't commit, you don't get, but if, uh, as far as an open side is concerned. But a number eight, you don't have to. You, you, as you're running towards where that action is, you're seeing what's going to happen next. So that's called vision or anticipation, I right. suppose you could yep. call it. Yep. So that's that. That's my explanation of, okay. of the difference. Can I ask anyway, you a couple of questions on that? Yeah. Can I is Sarah Goss? Is that because Goss because of Graham Murray? I, I'm making that connect. Am I connecting dots that aren't there? I've got no idea. Because Goss was Goss, 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 Goss was Graham Murray, wasn't he? And he was he was an open side. Yeah, he got, Goss was his nickname, but I don't oh, think okay. that's got anything to do with. All right. Well, Goss. Okay, I'm rolling a stat by you here, and this was for Mel Robinson, mate, and, and I started the programme by saying this. So 25 of the 38 tries scored by the England women have been off their forwards. 24 of those tries, Mex, have been line-out possession. 24 of 38 tries. How big a warning is that before the final tomorrow night for our Black fans? Yeah, it's a really interesting comment, that, actually. So that's one of the things that, if you don't watch the game, you don't see that, and we haven't seen much of England women have we uh, on television uh, for a long time so it's hard to be you know a connoisseur um, when you don't see them play but I mean the record is it 30 tests in a row in a row yep yep now that's quite exceptional but they have been professional for over a decade I mean Mel may have said how long but I, I can remember back at least 10 years maybe 15 years it might be they were being paid a salary uh, and they were the only team in the world that was, by the way. And our girls were just sort of, you know, um, amateurs like, yeah, part like I was. Yeah, right? yeah. And, um, and, and it didn't seem right, but we were better than them. You know, we were, we were better at the game. And I think, I dare say, there were more of our girls growing up playing touch rugby in the backyard uh, than, than they do in London, in the middle of London. Yeah, true. Um, where the bulk of the population is. But anyway, um, no, I, I'm... Um, I'm very interested to see what happens there because, you know, Wayne Smith, one of the great things about Wayne Smith and, and in fact, Ted as well, is that they've had a, a vast amount of experience. And I think the only word to describe uh, Smithy is astute. Good and word. obviously, yeah. Ted, but let's, use, let's say both of them are very astute. So they will be well aware of those stats. And not just watching a couple of games, but the record that Melody has produced for you, the, the information. Um, and it's bloody obvious that Northern Hemisphere teams do base their game on a structured forward approach. And that's what this is. However, we're not the same down under. Uh, we have, I think we have more instinct and more athleticism and you know, it's... Um, Smithy maybe calls it DNA. Of, uh, Smithy calls it DNA, Mick. So he's on the show on Tuesday. He calls it, our DNA is different. He said, our men and women play rugby differently. He said, that's, that's, that was his call. It, well, he said that about men and women. Yeah, and I think it's the same about Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. There you go. Respect. Yep. Well, like, French, French normally make a mockery of that, actually, of that point. But the British game really is a structured approach. And these girls, uh, if you've been professional for that long, they're training every day. They're in the gym just like, um, you know, our all-black players are. Um, and, you know, they're physically strong. Um, they're going to have their, their... Definitely the pressure they're going to apply is going to be all the preparation they've done. So their scrum will be really good. Their line-out will be really good. Those structured areas. What I hope to see, and, I, and as I'm talking about Ted and, and Smithy being very astute, they'll be making it really clear and... and these guys have only had one year to do this, and they've turned this team completely around one year, you know, and so it shows it can be done. What they haven't had is time in the saddle with their players, time in the saddle together, building that um, that combination, that coordination, the unity, the, the Ma Nonu, Conrad Smith unity type thing, you know, um, and that will come with time, but 
what a what a great job they've done. Yeah, they're brilliant. One of the most significant um, strengths they have is strategy, and what we will be trying to do is match this English, this formidable English forward pack and structure with our with our improved um, effort up front, and and we will have a bonus behind behind that game. We will have a, um, in my opinion, unless we go into our shell. And, you know, the more pressure you're under, the easier it is to go into your shell. And that's where your mental strength comes out. And there's an expression that I use at, at Irons, actually, is the courage to attack. Yes, so Smithy says that. He to... says that as well, mate. That's exactly the words he uses. Brilliant. Does he? He must have pinched it from me. He must have. <laughs> no, but the courage to attack, in other words, when you're fatigued, um, you know, you really are, and you're not sure you can make the next bloody 10 metres as effectively as you, you could, you know, a few minutes before. Um, your brain's got to bloody really engage. Uh, you really have to be on to it. Nothing else in the world counts. And that's called mental toughness. We refer to that as mental toughness. Yep. Um, you know, and, and to, to the courage to attack is when you're under real pressure, you're tired, but you can just see that little bit of opportunity to move the ball one space or take the gap or whatever whatever the decision is and that's where I think we can beat England uh, as long as we don't go into our shell. Okay, I've got one thing for you finally and quickly, we've got a couple of texts coming one of them says, can you please put Mex up as a podcast yes people, we will do that uh, because if you've just joined in, Murray Mex did all that legend is with us, another one says um, can you ask Mex, please, Marty? What really frustrates me, says this texture about our Northern Tour, is why we aren't treating this like a World Cup, why we're chopping and changing the side, and the selectors have already said they're going to make changes. We don't know what that team is, Mex. It comes out at 12.30 a.m. tonight, so it's a bit frustrating because we're kind of only speculating. But they've already hinted Ian Foster at changes, and, and, I, and I, it, just, it just irks me because I want to see... I would have treated it like quarter, semi, and final. I know the opponents are set in stone, but just playing the team and saying, this is our 23, you've got to play... And you talk about combinations, and I hope you agree with me that that, to me, would be more important than chopping and changing the side right now. Well, in response to your two points, the first one is I'm waving my hands around all over the place when I'm talking to you, so there's a floor show going on here. Right. The second one is, because you know how some people talk with their hands, mm -hmm. and, and when you live in France as a young person, you get influenced by those people around you. And if you can't speak the language, you've got to understand the hand, la the, you know, the sign language. But anyway, the second thing is, uh, this is a different situation. I agree very much with that se that second point of yours that uh, chopping and changing. I hate chopping and changing. I want to get the two best as soon as you can and get them to play together and two people equal three. Not quite, but you know, almost. Because there's a telepathic sort of um, factor that develops between you. And um, one of the problems we've got is it's only 12 months yeah. since Smitty and, and Ted took the helm. 12 months they've got to work all this out. They don't know. I mean, I, I reckon they'll have players in that team that they wouldn't have heard of six months ago. No one would have heard of. No, sorry, I'm actually no, talking about no, the All Blacks, mate. I'm sorry, I'm, no, I'm actually talking, not the Black fans. I'm actually talking, what, they, what this text is saying is, why, why aren't the All Blacks treating these games like quarter semi? Oh. Yeah. Why are we chopping oh, it? Sorry, mate. I I'm so I'm so consumed by this <laughs> World Cup final with yeah. the woman, aren't I? Yeah. So no. So just no. So it, was, it was about the All Blacks. We would have sold out. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, on that on that case, I agree entirely. You've got to get continuity immediately, and we're running out of time. I think there was a countdown. How many tests are there? About eleven. Is it eleven to go before? The, well, hang on. So not no. quite sure. I think that's even less than that now. Me. Yeah, I think it's about six or seven. I don't because we play a truncated Tri Nations next year. We get a game against South Africa added on. I think we get one of the Pacific Islands. I think it's about five. I think after these two, I think we've got six next year. So maybe yeah, but then you've got you've got pool games. So you've got you know a couple of pool games, and then you've got a quarter final, and that quarter final is probably going to be against someone like. Um, South Africa or uh, Ireland or maybe something. South like Africa or Ireland, yeah. So it's going to be a hell of a, a hell of a bloody challenge, isn't it? So you know, um, we've got we have got time, um, but not much time. Um, so I'd like to see their selections stay pretty bloody constant, and it does worry me when I hear Ian Foster saying, you know, we're giving everybody a bit of a feel. Well, you can't please all the people all the time. And you've got to make a call at some stage, uh, and then you've got to have a backup. 
after his injury, and I think that's what he's thinking. But remember, we made this mistake on the last rugby world mm-hmm. cup. Mm-hmm. We chopped and changed, and we tried to develop two players of equal ability in those positions. They might have done that, but they didn't develop players with the same sort of um, coordination together. So, yeah, so I think that's a real concern. So I'd like to see this loose forward trio exactly the same because I think Frizzell is short of a gallop when it comes to World Cup finals at this stage. And I think Papalee's short of a gallop too. But their combination, you know, could develop into a significant combination. Who knows? I mean, you know, I think that there needs to be a um, you know, another Barrett in the loose forwards. No, no. But at the moment, with Brody Retallick out, they're probably going to end up playing him at lock again because he's such a, a great footballer. He can play equally well as lock and blindside flanker. But his great attribute is skill in the air winning the ball. Mm. And both Fuzzell, um and Papali aren't as good as him in the air. And that's important. And we need two of those if we're going to win the Rugby World Cup. Mix, thank you very much. Murray Mix did the Irons Insight.